In this video I want to talk to you guys about barriers and how it plays a role in my EDC ammunition selection. And basically, first thing I like to consider is the environments I'm going to be going into and the barrier characteristics uh, that uh, the barriers are going to have there. Because pretty much everywhere we go, uh, I found that we're all, almost always around concealment. From my experience, most of this stuff is concealment. I mean, heck, if I'm, if I'm doing an uh, an ammunition for like my house, I gotta consider the fact that I have, you know, wallboard, I've got two by fours, I've got, you know, stuff in the door frames, I've got, uh, you know, the hollow, the hollow corrugated doors, I've got, you know, fiberglass or steel doors, I've got window panes and stuff like that. So many different barriers. Uh, they're light, bullets will go through them, but I do have different barriers with different characteristics. Uh, that'll affect the bullet a little bit differently. So you can't just say, uh, in my opinion, you can't just say, oh, well, for personal defense ammunition, only have like something that performs good in heavy clothing. I feel that that is very shallow in thinking and preparedness. Uh, so then, so you can you can war game that you know on your own like say you're going to the mall well think about the barriers there and the characteristics of those barriers and think about the reality of you know having to engage like an active shooter in an area like that horrible 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 but uh, in that instance I would have to consider my environment you know the fact that there's going to be uh, different barriers like glass and kiosks in the way so I need to understand those barriers the materials and the characteristics they're going to have, and the, basically the characteristics means the effect they're going to have on the bullet. If I'm having to shoot through uh, some of that glass, and at somebody that's on the far side, because they have their back turned to me, but, you know, it's an active shooter or whatever, if I don't really have much of a choice, will that still perform enough of, uh, uh, perform well enough terminally? Also, you got to consider the fact that you're not just preparing for one barrier, you're preparing for multiple barriers. Uh, this isn't to say go with something that's advertised to be barrier blind, do your own research. Um, but something that might be good at going through glass and reaching somebody, you know, 30 feet away, if that's even a reality. Uh, I have to consider the fact that that bullet might also not also do very well going through wood or going through steel or whatever. There's plenty of examples out there where there's uh, been people that have gotten in shootings and the, the barrier between them was their own vehicle and the width between them was their own vehicle because they were butted up against it and they were putting shots through the vehicle and nobody got hurt. But uh, sometimes vehicles can be great bullet sponges and other times they can basically be bullet blind like they'll just let bullets pass through them freely with very little you know problem it depends on the vehicle and all these other factors but I take that into account I take all those uh, different barriers into account and it's really hard to get one that does good at everything but you know it is what it is and uh, the next thing is I do like to kind of use the FBI uh, test as kind of a baseline to kind of get an idea of how different barriers affect different rounds of course I do my further research I do even do my own testing on on my range on certain barriers, see the deformation and stuff like that, catch it in my own way, like doing my own meat target tests that, no, I don't film, but, you know, I do my own uh, tests and I kind of, you know, look at different data sources and try to, you know, translate it based on mixing my experience with these uh, test results, and I, I can tell you, the FBI test done in actual FBI ballistics gel, you know, the pork-based stuff, and the clear ballistics, totally different. So I don't really even consider the clear ballistics gel to actually be an entirely valid one. Usually what I do is, say you get a bullet that penetrates, you know, 14 inches in clear ballistics. Uh, I would actually back off the penetration about 4 inches just to be on the safe side because typically clear ballistics is not going to allow the round to expand all that much and it also can it's more flexible so it tends to let bullets travel a little bit longer so you know with all that said you know I'll go off of the actual FBI ballistics gel tests but it, I do my own little translation there so that's kinda of why I wanted to cover that subject because there's a lot of tests online where they're like 
well, it did this in this lucky gunner test, and it's like, yeah, he used clear ballistics, and so I take about four inches off of that, uh, you know, accounting for the fact that he's basically right on the thing, and it's flexible, so you can calculate two to four inches off that, and some, most of those bullets accurately are under penetrators anyways, or bare minimum penetrators, which in clear ballistics they'll show that they actually penetrate like 15 or 16 inches. Kind of unrealistic. But anyways, you know, that's what I do when I'm uh, considering barriers as part of my EDC selection. It can be kind of complicated. I could get in the weeds more with this, but to save your ears and to save your brain, I'm already putting you on the chalkboard of death, so we're going to keep it at that. Just kind of keep it elementary. But that's what I do. It's not a suggestion, it's not, you know, training or anything. As I said, I'm just using my experience and, you know, my, you know, my dumb mind to kind of do my own little calculations on, you know, what to do and what or what could happen and what to do with what uh, ammunition is available. So, anyways, with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and finish my coffee and I'll see you guys in the next EDC ammunition selection video.